Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of James Speed Shop. So, VA Turbo Project W124, if you're new to the channel, right corner for you. From my logo you see the full playlist of that project and other uh, reviews and projects I've done before. So, um, don't forget to subscribe, put a thumbs up, it's good for the algorithm. In this video we're going to do the last bit of the engine bay, it's like yeah, there are some small things, but this is one of the last big things that I need to do. Uh, that is front suspension. So, you didn't see the last videos, but I will show you a little bit. The, the shock absorber that's here is a hydraulic one that's coming from an R129. So, R129s had an optional thing on the normal versions, except the SL600 that was standard, to have hydraulic uh, suspension in the front of the car and in the back and also the right height was adjustable and also spot setting so harder uh, harder shocks so more sportive for drive so I use the same uh, circuit shoppers on the front and I have to build in the rest of the system <coughs> so what is the rest of the system so the rest of the system contains some parts so this is for the most people familiar this is like uh, accumulator it contains a certain amount of uh, nitrogen pressure, in this case it's 23 bars. Then you got oil pressure on top and then it works like a spring. So, uh, and then oil flows in just through this big connection on top, here via the banyo bolt, and then goes to the shock absorber. So, and then there is, uh, when the car is damping, the damping is in the, in the accumulator. If you want to raise the level, you pump in more oil through this channel. So that works the same way as in the back. So there is like a valve on the front axle or on the uh, stabilizer bar. If the car is going up or down, it lets more in, oil in, or it lets oil out. And that, that is why it's adjustable. So that's one thing. The second thing is, uh, how can you adjust the, the softness or the hardness of the, of the suspension? The original parts have also uh, a standard uh, kinds of valves in it. So I, uh, those valves are pretty rare and not easy to get and so I'm going to do it a different way. So this is like an industrial way of doing it. This is just a free two valve uh, and I can just go through the B channel or to the A channel from this side. So this side will connect it to this point and then I go from a channel to the shock absorber or for B channel. And what I'm going to do in between, there's a reducer valve. So I can reduce the flow going through the shock absorber or going back to the, the spring. So that is the plan what I'm going to do and everything needs to be built in the wheel arch. So if we look to this point, there is not a lot of butter room, but there is some room because there is of course a wheel well like this. So that's the best thing of it. <coughs> I have some space. So normally there is a vacuum chamber here that's connected to this hose. I will replace it. So uh, my plan was also to put the uh, window wiper tank in here. Have to have a look how good that will go then after I put all the systems in. So the lowest point for me now is the spring. That will be mounted somewhere in here so because it's that's a possibility. I will mount it like this. Then I have an opening for the the top to connect the oil chamber in it. Then the other valve uh, will be above it, and then I can separate the channels. So it will be somewhere like this. It will be mounted like this somewhere. That's the plan. And then the two valves needs to go in. Then there will be a connection from the two valves to a T-piece and the T-piece will go in somewhere here going through and then there will be a house that's connected to the top of the shock absorber. That's how it should work. That's the shortest way I can explain it. Then there's going one line is going to the front and that's going to that valve, that level valve and when it's on the level valve then I can, now I have to connect it to the hydraulic pump, the same system as in the back. I will show you that when I'm uh, more on that point of testing it. So oh yeah, this is the uh, vacuum chamber I mentioned. 
to find another place for it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I have to do it on both sides. So this is a free two valve. Because if I use a 6 2 valve, I can switch the one solenoid, two channels. Uh, but I have an engine in between. So then I have a long, long hydraulic lines running through the car. So I use two different valves. And in the back, I use a 6 2 valve. So I will show you that in a video later how it all works. But this is the base settings. And I'm going to do one side and show you how it will look. So uh, let's go. So it's about two days later, got the system on both sides installed. Um, a little difference because I now have hydraulic lines and I lost the Cunifer lines because there was a pressure difference. Uh, the manufacturer gave me the wrong pressures. So this is 10 millimeter, so 10 L hydraulic line. So this can hold an easy 200 more than 200 bars. Also the other components are all rated to 200 bars. Uh, the line from Cunifer 10 millimeters can only hold 90 bars. So uh, yeah, that's not good. So that's why I changed it. So how does this system work? So the only thing that I changed on this is I made a bracket for the accumulator that's now in, in the high, it's just hanging here, pretty good. So how does it work? So this is the spring. Or the shock absorber just is just the same system as on an as on a 24 in the back it's just an oil cylinder so it pressurized the oil in it and if the car is moving like it's going up and down the oil will flow through here and then i got two channels or it's going through this channel and then going to from bay to p into the accumulator that's one side R is going to the other side, going through E to P. So that's why the free two valve is in here. I can select uh, channel B or channel A, and then I can adjust uh, the spring load or the, the, the shock absorber load. So more firm or less firm. So they are completely out now. So this is the softer setting. Um, so that's how the shock absorber settings work. So the leveling, so going up and down, that is uh, on the side here. I don't know if you can see, but on the side here, there is another connection. That's like, it's a 10 millimeter insert. So it's the same as a brake line. So it's a 4.75 millimeters brake line uh, connection. That will pump oil in the system or let oil out of the system. That is with a level valve. So on the other side is the same, exactly the same system, two valves, uh, can select the E, A or the B, and then the pressure, uh, pressure is on here. So this is like the origin, the same way how it's done originally. So you can see here maybe there's a connection, this is how you pump oil in the system or let oil out of the system. So that creates the level, the leveling. <coughs> so. I will put the wheel ass on it and show you that I have room in there. So before I show you this valve, so this is the level valve. You got two bigger lines. This is I think 12 millimeters or this is a uh, six millimeter line or 6.35. This is a uh, uh, pressure from the pump and a return from the pump. And there's an overflow uh, uh, valve in here that's opening at 190 bars. So when it's closed, it's always flowing back to the tank. So it's a closed system. So if you need uh, pressure then you have this stop connection uh, this is also another connection but I don't know why this is closer this is like a breather but this is also a breather I thought then you get <coughs> so if this this arm is connected to your stabilizer bar so if your stabilizer bar is moving it will pull this up or pull it down so in one way or another for I don't know if this is the right way up or down but this is when it's going up and for example uh, the car is lowering and you want so we have more load in the car It will put more oil in it and will level out again. That's the same way for uh, When it's too high it will go this way We let oil out of it and it goes down. So I have a system that I'm going to control the arm that's in between here That's the same Kind of system that's on the 190 evos and on the RON29 SL systems They have I think on the 190s for sure. There's like an 
an arm in here that can hydraulically move like a centimeter in and a centimeter out and that's how you control the level height of the car so that's the second thing that I'm going to do that will be for the next video so first I'm going to show you the wheel arts so wheel arts is on the car um, inner wheel uh, inner wheel uh, arts is out of it the inner one it's not fully connected but it's over it so as you can see now <coughs> this is how it will look when it's in the car you can see I have play on the side connection there and then if you want to uh, adjust these valves you just take out the inner wheel arts and then you can see those connections so it will all be nice and coat coating on it and then uh, it will all be good so there was also a vacuum chamber in here and on the other side also yeah they won't fit there anymore these two so I have to find a solution for it because they were connected somewhere in here so I have they cannot be fitted here because there's the spring so I have to find a solution to mount them or something so they're not interfering with different parts of put it over here and then I have created another problem because my plan was to get this tank in here this is the window wiper tank so, have to figure out what I'm going to do with it now. So, this part is done. Hydraulic system is in for adjusting the suspension firmness. So the leveling will be one of the next things what I'm going to do so I can pump up the system and let some oil out of it. Then I'm also going to uh, check if that will work with my engine weight and that sort of stuff. So I want to have that done before I take the engine and everything out of the car. That will be one of the last things that I need to do. So I have to do the leveling for the car, wiper tank, uh, do those two fell of those two uh, reservoirs for the vacuum needs to be placed somewhere. And then uh, yeah, I'm pretty pretty far into it make the downpipe I think I can do just a small thing I can also do it afterwards but uh, yeah so I'm pretty close to having the engine bay done and then it's going to be uh, removing everything from the engine bay and get the paint and that sort of stuff so hope you like this video have a look on jnspeedshirt.com that's over here don't forget to subscribe ask me if you get any questions thanks for watching see you for the next one bye bye